Hello everyone, my name is John and I am the science educator for Fort Bend Children's Discovery Center. And for our Protect Our Planet Wonder Week, sponsored by the Medallion Foundation, we're going to be learning the importance of how they protect us from something called erosion. So let's get started. All across our planet we have rainstorms that pour a bunch of water on the surface of our planet. Now there's a big difference in whether we have plants or no plants. And what that can change is the amount of erosion. So I've said that word a couple times and all that means is that soil and dirt can be moved away or removed from the area. And so we're gonna do a quick experiment just using water and some sand and some fake plants to show how important plants are to limit the amount of soil that's removed during a rainstorm. So all you'll need is some sand and a big container of water. This is gonna be our rainstorm. And you'll start by pouring it over the area that doesn't have any plants. So we'll start with the area that's just sand, dirt, soil. And when we start to pour, we'll pour about half of our water. You can start to see that the sand and dirt is moving pretty quickly. But now what if we have the same amount of rainstorm over an area that still has a lot of plants? You can see the water is going through the plants, going through the soil. And what the red bag is representing is the root systems of the plants. And you can see that it's trapped a lot more of the soil and dirt and it hasn't let it be removed rather than an area that might be under construction and it's mostly dirt. All of that will get kind of pushed away down into other streams and out into eventually the Gulf of Mexico if you're starting from Houston. And so it really shows us how important it is to have a lot of plants, whether that's trees, grass, and what, what scientists do is they use satellites to try and track what the land cover looks like. So a satellite will go over our planet to measure how much is covered by grass versus just soil or maybe there's concrete. So we're going to do a quick at home experiment to see what the land cover is in your backyard. To map out your own backyard, all you'll need is some graph paper. So I'm using 10 squares by 10 squares, so a total of 100 squares, and we're gonna assign a few different things. So each square is either gonna be grass, it's gonna be a tree, rocks, gravel, or maybe concrete. And what you wanna do is try and see how many squares you have in your yard that are grass and trees and plants. Because like we showed you here, they're really important for keeping all the soil right where it's supposed to be. So I've actually mapped out my own backyard so you guys can see and make a, make a little more sense of how this activity works by just seeing how much plants I have in my backyard. So what I did is I assigned each thing different colors. So the black squares here is where my driveway kind of goes into my backyard. So I have 25 squares, roughly, that are concrete or pavement. So about 25% of my yard is not plants or trees. The red is our flowers and plants that I have around my driveway. I have about 11 squares. So I have about 11% of my yard is flowers or plants. Then the rest, I have only really four trees. And so I have about 4% trees. And then everything else is grass. So about 60% of my yard is plants trapping that soil. So now you can, you can see, no matter what your backyard looks like, you can assign different colors to mean different things. If you have three bicycles in your backyard, you might designate a color to bicycles that are covering spots on your yard. So give it a try. Thanks for tuning in to learn the importance of plants. A big thank you to the Medallion Foundation for sponsoring this video. And if you guys are following us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button to see all the daily content we're producing. Again, my name is John coming to you from Fort Bend Children's Discovery Center, and we will see you next time.